Good morning, everybody. My name is John Gilbert, and I'm with Pellissippi State Community College. I appreciate you joining us today for an Essential Skills for Employment workshop, and I will uh, turn it over to my colleague, Joy. Good morning. My name is Joy McCamey, and I am the Blount County Give Grant Coordinator. I, too, work with Pellissippi State, and this morning we have Miss Erica Greensmith from the Denzo Corporation, and again, she will be presenting on the Essential Skills in the Workplace session. Miss Erica, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am going to share my screen so you all can see my presentation. Um, let me know if you all can see that. You can see it? Okay, great. So again, thank you for having me. We appreciate this partnership with the GIVE Grant and also with Pellissippi State Community College. Thank you for having us and letting us participate in this subject matter. Um, again, my name is Erica Green-Smith. I have a bachelor's degree in business from Maryville College. I also have a master's degree in human resources from Tusculum College. Um, I am a senior recruiter at Denzo Manufacturing in Maryville, Tennessee. So throughout my career, um, I have about 12 years of experience and soft skills is something that we have trained our employees on um, over, over my experience at different companies. Something that I look for when I do interviewing. <clears throat> so I'm really excited to share this topic with you today. So um, in the business world, you hear about hard skills and soft skills. Okay, so what's the difference between a hard skill and a soft skill? I'm going to explain that to you. So hard skills are teachable skills that can be defined and measured. So think math, science, reading, writing, technology, those type of things, computer skills, um, welding, nursing, those things. Soft skills are your personality driven skills like etiquette, getting along with others, listening, engaging. Um, so those, those things, um, you need those soft skills and no matter what you do in regards to the hard skills like math, science and reading, you still need those soft skills. So um, the last point there, hard skills and soft skills are equally important for preparing for your college and career. So again, think of it, the skills, the hard skills as the job and then the soft skills is how you interact with those people, okay? So um, another example is um, if you play the piano, um, and reading music, that would be a hard skill. How you handle yourself when trying to teach someone how to play the piano, that, are, that is your soft skill, okay? Um, again, if you're a computer programmer, then your hard skill would be programming languages um, that you know. Um, and then uh, as far as uh, the soft skills go in that kind of a job, it would be good communication on explaining to your clients and customers how to use those computer skills or those, you know, that computer software. Okay, so why are we training on soft skills? Universities and employers are looking for well-prepared high school graduates who are ready for the challenges and responsibilities in higher academics in the workplace. Okay, so no matter whether you're going to college or you're going to um, a career right after high school, you're going to need these soft skills, whichever pathway you take. Um, you know, many employers have said they prefer to hire older people because of the lack of work ethic and reliability in young people. So that's why we're here today to um, hopefully um, increase those soft skills to get you employable and, and help you throughout your college career. Um, again, according to colleges and employers, young adults are less than successful at college in the workplace, not for lack of academic knowledge. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are very, very smart, but it's for the lack of soft skills, that endurance, that self-reliance, communication, being resourceful and problem solving um, in different avenues. So we're gonna focus on these soft skills today. Um, the first one being a strong work ethic, the next one being a positive attitude, good communication skills, time management, acting as a team player, flexibility, adaptability, and self-confidence. So we'll focus on those today. So as far as a strong work ethic, um, you know, ask yourself these questions. 
am I motivated and dedicated to getting the job done? No matter how horrible it may be. Um, you know, a lot of us don't want to do something sometimes, you know, whether it be wash the dishes or do homework assignment or a project. How motivated are you to get that job done? Will I work hard? Always do my, ba- my best, no matter what it is. Whether, again, be homework, being, you know, um, a pitcher in your baseball game, whether it's taking out the garbage for your mom, work hard, do 110%. Um, do I have commitment to excellence? You know, um, I tell my kids, do 110%, do a little bit above what is expected. Do I have a non-negotiable integrity? So basically, are you willing to, you know, are you okay with a little white lie or bending the truth a little bit? So make sure you have that high integrity and no matter what you do. Do I have modeling qualities of an honorable leader? We all know honorable, honorable teachers leaders in our community and in our country do you have those type of qualities and if you don't work on those strive for that do I demonstrate self-discipline and respect you know respect for yourself respect for those people on your team those type of things okay the next soft skill we're going to focus on is attitude positive attitude attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. You know, reflect on these things. Am I an optimistic and upbeat person? Some people like to say, are you a um, half full or half empty type of glass, you know, water um, in a glass? Um, I am a half full uh, glass of water type of person. I always like to see the positive in things. Do I generate good energy and good community with the people around me? You know, When you think positive thoughts and are a positive person, those people around you are going to feed off of that energy. So you don't want to have a negative, uh, that negative energy, kind of Debbie Downer attitude about you or your, you know, people around you will feed off of that. So always try to, to be positive. The next skill is relationship building and good communication skills. Building those healthy friendships and relationships is really important. Those will um, be beneficial to you as you um, go throughout your college and career. You may have friends later on in your life that will help you to try to find a job. Um, Being an encouraging team player, respectful and adaptable. Communications, how well one articulates what they speak or write. Being a good listener, this is really, really important. You know, people talk about communication skills. People think that's, you know, how you write and speak, but it's absolutely just as much as important that you listen um, to what is being, um, you know, asked of you, taught to you, those kinds of things. And then being able to understand another person, where are they coming from? Understand, you know, how they see the situation. And then body language is really important. So in the next couple slides, I'm going to show you some information on how to read body language. That is very important when communicating with someone. So I have, um, if we were doing this in person, we would be doing some role playing. So um, since we don't have that opportunity, I'm just going to give you some different scenarios on communication skills. So for example, you say you have person one, this is a work setting, okay? or it could be a classroom setting, whatever. Um, But you have one person who says, hey, could you help me pack these parts and boxes for team 12? And then the second person says, oh no, that's not my team or my job. Do you see how that's a negative communication style that person number two gave to um, person number one? They said, no, it's not my job, it's not my team, okay? So let's look at the conversation again. Person one says, hey, I know you don't usually work with team 12, but they really need our help today in packing out their new order. So the soft skills that person two could have improved that conversation could have be says something like this. Hey, they've helped us out before. When do they meet, need me? I would be happy to help. So those conversations um, can go either a negative or a positive way. It's all in how you react and your attitude towards that, right? And how you communicate that, okay? Um, The second person in the second scenario 
will have a better, um, you know, successful career if that's how they approach different situations. Okay, so here is a slide to be able to read some different body languages. This is really important when you're in a meeting or you're in a team environment. Um, you know, usually when people put their hands on their hips, this is a defensive mechanism. When you hold your arms across your um, body like this, this is also kind of an aggressive, defensive, you know, they're not open, in, they're not open or listen, open to listening to your thoughts and ideas. Um, you know, you see this guy here with the sunglasses, he's very slouchy. Um, so you would not want to show up, you know, for an example, in an interview um, with, you know, a shirt untucked, sunglasses, you just look very slouchy. Again, here are some other body languages to look out for. Um, the top row is high power, kind of aggressive uh, body language to be looking out for. And then on the bottom is low power body language. So these are um, body languages that you need to learn to read over your, um, you know, over your experiences. When somebody is in this lower uh, power body language down here on the bottom row, they um, may not be understanding. Um, they may be closed off to what you're saying because they don't feel, you can tell that some of them look confused and sad. Um, so this is where you may want to change the way you're trying to communicate um, so that that body language um, changes. And then here are some, here's another example of some things to do um, during class, during an interview, um, while you're at work, you know, those kind of types of things. Sit up straight, maintain eye contact, smile and be enthusiastic, and then use hand gestures. Do not slouch, stare, frown, or fidget. And you can see the difference. Who do you think would be hired for a job? The lady on the left or the lady on the right? Okay, so here's some, um, you know, on that body language and um, you know, the soft skills that necessarily don't have anything to do with how you talk or anything like that. But um, first impressions are really important. Skills you can use in fewer than seven sec seconds, especially when you're making a first impression. They call these skills the special principles. So if you remember this, when you make a first impression with, you know, if you're doing an interview to get, try to get into college or you're trying, you know, you have an interview to get a job when you're in high school or your first job out of college. Remember these things, special. Normally, um, the very first one would be shake hands, but obviously with uh, COVID-19, we don't wanna be shaking hands. So we'll check that one off the list for right now, but you could definitely do a fist bump or a elbow or um, you know something like that to introduce yourself, yourself. But have good posture, You know, stand up straight, like I said, make eye contact, be charming and nice introduce yourself, um, ask questions, and, apps and, and learn and listen. That's the big thing, is to listen. Time management. So this is another soft skill um, that employers look for and colleges look for, um, but you could be working on this now, whether you're in middle school or high school. So ask yourself these questions. How well do I prioritize different tasks and projects at one time? Are you wise about the way you spend your time and use your time? You know, there are a lot of student athletes, um, you know, whether you're in school or college, um, you have to be able to prioritize your time to be successful in either your sport or your education. So here's some uh, tips that I wanted to share with you on time management. You know, start a to-do list, use a planner or a dry erase board, my son uses note cards and he checks off. He does his to-do list and he's in the seventh grade. So we've already tried to start him on his time management skills. It's easy. It's easier to see all of your tasks in one place instead of, you know, different, um, different sheets from different teachers all over the place. Just try to um, put that all in one spot and prioritize your to-do list. You know, the things that are due sooner, you want to put at the top of your list, and the things that are due three weeks from now, put towards the bottom of your list. And then bring work along with you. This is really important. Um, you know, my son plays sports, so we bring his homework along in, 
in the car, you know, take your work along with you wherever you go so you can utilize that time. Um, you know, we don't like to waste time um, in my family so uh, or procrastinate. So we, we uh, do his schoolwork sometimes in the car on our way to practice. Um, you know, if you're going out to eat or you having to fly somewhere in the airport, you could be doing your homework, those kinds of things. Um, you know, make sure you schedule everything, put it on your calendar, put reminders. And then also don't be afraid to say no. You know, there's always, um, well, not so much right now with COVID, but um, hopefully after COVID, we'll get back to our normal um, where we can get together with our friends and our youth groups and things like that. But don't be afraid to say no um, if you have stuff that you need to get done for school or your job. Um, and then make your study time effective. So this is a technique that's very successful. Um, it's called the Pomodoro Technique. So when you do this, when you're studying, <clears throat> turn off your phone, your email, social media, and other distractions. But the way it works is you focus on your studying for 25 minutes, and then you can take a five-minute break, and then you go back to your studying for 25 minutes, five-minute break, go back to studying 25 minutes, and then take a break for 10 minutes. During those five, 10 minute bursts, um, your breaks, you know, stretch, walk, grab a snack, you know, do things like that. Um, it's easier to do it this way instead of sitting down and say, I'm going to study for two hours straight. Um, you know, that's just not feasible. It'll be hard for you to retain that information. So try to take breaks um, during that study time. Okay, the next soft skill we're going to focus on is acting as a team player. This is very important, as you probably know, in your school projects, um, but also in the workforce. Um, you know, we are always working on team projects. Team projects do not end um, after high school. You will have team uh, projects in college. You will have team projects in work, in your career. So personal reflection on this is how well do I work in groups and teams? Do you have a preference of working in a team or, you know, by yourself? Um, and then how important is this to my career choice? Um, you know, there are jobs out there where you don't necessarily have to work um, in teams. They're more individualized type careers. So, you know, look into that if you're just absolutely not um, a group team type of person. But generally speaking, most jobs you are going to work in a team no matter what it is. The other soft skills that employers look for, and then also colleges as well, is, you know, are you open to new ideas? Are you able to embrace change? We've all had to embrace change this last year. You know, are you adaptable, adapt to the new situations? We've all had to do that, whether we've been teachers or students or people um, in business. We've had to just be able to roll with it. Um, are you willing to learn new things? Um, we've all had to learn how to use Zoom and other um, presentation type alternatives during this time. Um, you know, are you willing to grow personally and professionally? This is also really important um, in your career. And that's what employers look for is someone who is continually wanting to grow personally and professionally because that benefits the employee as well as the employer. And then self-confidence, this is very important. You don't wanna have, you know, when you come into an interview or you're on the job and you have this attitude of, it's, it's a balance because you don't wanna be too like somebody who is a know-it-all um, or cocky or anything like that. So it's a balancing act that you believe in yourself and you have self-confidence, but not in a way that, um, you know, puts people off where they don't wanna work with you or, oh, that person thinks they know everything, you know, that kind of thing. You don't want to be that person, but you do want to have self-confidence and believe in yourself, trust in your abilities, judgment, and network. Um, have courage to ask questions and contribute ideas. This is really important to be able to speak up um, at work, um, that people have hired you for a reason when you get a job, and it's because they feel like you have something to contribute to the team and to the business. So, do not be afraid to ask questions um, or, like I said, contribute ideas. Change that I can't into I can. So this, I wanted to throw this in here because with <laughs> virtual learning and 
those type of things, it's really important that we um, work on our virtual presentation skills. So speak on camera. Um, sometimes I have a headset right now. Um, I think that is better than just speaking into your computer. So whatever you can to do that um, is good. Sharpen your message to adapt to the shorter attention span of virtual audience. So um, I have tried to make this quick because as virtual learning, it's uh, you lose you lose your audience and um, and, and things like that um, because we're just so used to having things virtual, we kind of tune stuff out. So um, sharpen that message, and then replace fillers such as um, um, and I'll talk a little a little bit about um, you know that later. Change that. Um, so sometimes I use the word so instead of using um, um, you know, we've all experienced that when giving a presentation um, um, during the whole time. And so that's a no-no when doing presentations. So like I said, I try to use the word so. Um, the next thing we did, um, so use that and then I'll talk a little bit about that, um, you know, later on in the presentation, things like that. Use um, confident type words and then use tech tools such as polling, chat, embedded video clips and whiteboard to encourage interaction. Um, normally we would um, share videos, but I have tried sharing videos and uh, a lot of students' computers um, are not able to open YouTube. So we weren't able to do any of that today. How to improve your soft skills. So a lot of people ask this, well, what can I do though? I'm giving you all of this information, but what next? Um, there's always ways you can you can improve your skills. Take some online courses. You know, just because you've taken this one course doesn't make you a soft skills expert, right? So continually take online courses or face-to-face -face courses eventually um, with your school or your college or your business. You can teach yourself practically anything online today. So why not uh, soft skills? And then get feedback from others. Gain awareness of your personal strengths and weaknesses. A lot of times when you in college and you're doing a team project, a lot of times your professors will have a form you have to fill out rating the other people on your team. You know, did they cooperate? Were they a team player? Did they have a good attitude? You know, those type of things. So, you know, taking those things to heart and really listening to what other people have to say about you in regards to your teamwork is important so you can improve in those areas. Um, get a coach or a mentor. A coach can help you develop certain soft skills quickly and effectively. But also this is really important when you're in college and in your career to get a mentor or coach to help you work on your, you know, your hard skills and your soft skills. Um, you know, just ask uh, a, a colleague or you know, a boss or a friend of yours to be a coach or mentor to help you on those types of things. And then always practice with a friend. You know, practice makes perfect in no matter what you do. I also wanted to show, share this in here as well. Um, be social media aware. Uh, colleges and employers are looking at these things. So I know you hear this from your teachers and your parents, but it very much is true. Employers do search for you on um, social media to see what type of a character that you have. Um, so, you know, be very careful on what you put out there. So just to recap on soft skills for success, have a strong work ethic, positive attitude, good communication skills, time management, acting as a team player, your flexibility, adaptability, and self-confidence. So just wanted to share a little bit about Denso, the company that I work for. We are a global company and we have over 170,000 employees and we are actually the world's second largest auto parts maker in the world and our headquarters are in Japan. These are the types of jobs that we hire at Denso, interns, co-ops, in business and engineering. We also have a lot of skilled trades people. So this is you know, our maintenance. <clears throat> and then on the professional side, we have accounting, education, engineering, human resources, IT, leadership management, public relations, safety and health. All of these jobs I have listed here require soft skills. So just know that. Again, whether you are going to college after high school or you're going to your career after high school, you will need 
your soft skills. Does anybody have any questions? I have one question, Erica. Yeah. If you need to work on, or you're aware that you need to work on your ability to work as part of a team, but you're not really part of a team of whether it be sports or anything like that, what are some recommendations you have for how to work on those team building and team participation skills? Yeah, there, I mean, there's different, uh, different things you can do, you know, you can join a club, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to, you know, be on a sports team, but you could be on a robotics club or a debate team, you know, something like that, a math club, um, because the goal is to, you know, win at competitions some way or some, somehow. So um, that's one way that you could work on your team skills. But, you know, Another way is, um, you know, maybe not right now with COVID, but, you know, once kids are back in school face to face, um, I know this to be in, in college, I'm sure it is in high school, but you are giving, given team projects, you know, a problem and you have to come up with a solution or whatever it may be. Um, you can practice your soft skills in those type of team environments. Okay, thanks. Does anybody else have any other questions? You're good? Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Erica, for presenting this morning. I'm going to launch a poll in the chat. So for any attendees that have the accessibility, please do this poll. I'm gonna leave it up for about a minute and a half. John, are there any closing comments that you have at this time? No, I just wanted to thank Erica for taking the time to present this information because this information is very vital for all employers that we've spoken with and something that always comes up in discussion of needs. So if you are listening to this, please pay special attention to the soft skills because it is very important uh, when you go to look for a job or when you go to school to work as a part of a team. Thank you. So I'm gonna be closing the poll here in just a few seconds and we'll gather that information later. Once again, Ms. Erica, I would like to thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate your assistance uh, in performing this workshop and this essential skills for the students. And I know that this, will, this video is being recorded, so it will have the opportunity to be represented in classrooms beyond today. Okay, thank you so much for having me. We appreciate it.